Greetings from Venice, one of the most spectacular cities on the planet. And one of the most crowded too, but not in 2020, because you know. So let's go explore this place, shall we? of size connects the interrogation room to the new prisons of the Doja Palace and the view from those windows was the last view the convicts could see on their way to the prison cells before their imprisonment which most of the times meant a life sentence. So I guess now you understand why it's called the breach of size. <laughs> humble opinion it's one of the most beautiful one of the most amazing squares on the planet but I guess you might not know that this amazing bell tower is not the original so the story goes that it's a pretty sad story especially for the uh, inhabitants of Venice in 1902 uh, the bell tower collapsed due to a structural failure and the chronicles of the time remember the, the moment when they threw rubbles in the sea as a funeral procession. One brick was surrounded by laurel branches and engraved with a date, July 14, 1902, the very sick day when the bell tower came down. Venetians rebuilt the tower just like the way it was in 1912. most popular drinks from Italy. The name doesn't sound really Italian though, does it? I'll tell you a little cool historical fact now. So Venice uh, used to be part of the Austro-Hungarian Empire along with the regions uh, in the northeast of the country from 1821 to 1866 and the, the troops, Austro-Hungarian troops deployed here are more specifically in the city of Trieste which is a nearby city used to dilute the local wines which were extremely strong with cells. And that's how this, ex this very cool drink, this amazing drink, came to be. Uh, what's more, well, spritzen in German, it means to spray. So it's Italian, but it's not really Italian-Italian. And yes, this is a long pasta for a straw. Salute to the former Austro-Hungarian Empire. Thank you for your beautiful invention, which makes millions of people happy across the world. Cheers.
might wonder how deep are the canals in Venice? Well, most of them, like this one, are about a meter and a half to two meters deep. Then you have the main canal, the Grand Canal, like the big boulevard of all the canals of Venice, which is about uh, five meters deep. Venice is the only Ital major Italian city built after the fall of the Western Roman Empire. Well, the people from this area decided to build a city in water for one main reason. And the reason was to protect themselves from the uh, barbarian um, tribes or from Northern Europe, specifically the Longbards, which means long beards. So what they thought about was, you know, they, they started importing over a million, one million one hundred thousand tree logs from uh, the area where ex Yugoslavia used to be. They were mostly pine and oak trees. So yeah, and everything you see here, every single building is standing on tree logs stuck halfway through the lagoon bed. And uh, this strategy proved to be right because nobody was ever able to successfully invade Venice. Nobody, except for Napoleon. So in the year 421 AD, March 25th, at high noon, Venice was born. Why is there graffiti in Russian? That's a mystery to me. Zachem. Have you ever wondered if the city is built on water, does it have a sewer system? Well, till the 1960s, wastewater from houses and buildings went straight from the house into the canals through some little openings called gatoli or gato, gatoli, which by the way sounds like gutter, doesn't it? And they're basically narrow tunnels built with clay bricks. I'm gonna show you one of them now. But anyway, the thing worked because they used to clean the canals on a regular basis. So the situation was livable and bearable. See, that's the Gatoli, the little opening I told you about before. The problems started to rise in the 1960s when the economic boom came. More and more people started using toilet paper and uh, dishwasher soaps, thus clogging the Gatoli, those little openings and contaminating the lagoon with uh, foamy chemicals which drew legions of little pesky bugs. The solution they found was they basically they basically drained the entire canals with the system of pumps and dams, scraped the very bottom of them, let's say they cleaned what had to be cleaned, and installed modern septic tanks anywhere possible. Once someone from America asked me, does Venice smell bad? Nope, the answer is no, it doesn't. And you can trust me on this because I got a pretty big nose and it works really fine. But yeah, it used to smell back in the 60s. Those smelly 60s, huh? Do you see this bell tower? The tripod is perfectly balanced. So it's not made, it's the tower, it's leaning, yes. Like, just like the leaning tower of Pisa. And Italians in their passion for leaning structures, huh? Some of these alley streets are so narrow. Two, you know, it's barely wide enough for two people to pass by. It's a good thing I'm on a diet. I'm not entirely sure, but this should be an ancient well where people came to get drinkable water back in the days. And it looks so cool! It stands right beside this amazing cathedral. Look at the dome, look at the size of that dome! wondering if one of these buildings was Marco Polo's. You know, he was from Venice and he traveled all the way to China across the Silk Road from Venice. I think that was a milestone for mankind because nobody else ever did anything like that. Just let that sink in for a moment. 
went all the way to China from here. There was a ton of cultural exchange and uh, geographical maps were redrawn. There was a like a big turning point for the history of everybody. And who knows, maybe he was really looking outside of the window from one of these buildings, one of these balconies, sort of balconies we see. I mean, probably not, but who knows? Anything could be, right? Let's go. One tragic mental mistake we make when we are in Europe and we are surrounded by such majesty, such magnificence. And, we, and all we see around us is just an, an endless ocean of tourists. We are inclined to, to feel like we are in a museum and we don't understand what's the connection between the past and now. But let me tell you, the only, the one and only connection is the natives from Venice. So their ancestors have lived here for hundreds and hundreds of years and their blood is running through the veins of the Venetians who are walking the streets today. When you come to Venice, please don't be the typical tourist from the 21st century who wants to see a dozen landmarks in just one hour. Take it easy, go slow, take your time, observe and take it all in. is famous for uh, fish dishes and today I'm gonna go for some grilled prawns yeah. it's good juicy not fishy fishy but if you, if you get what I mean it's it's good by one of this record. Please now, turn it over for the second side. This is the second side. A short trip to Venice has come to an end. Thanks for watching.